Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a cell and a battery. You should then be able to evaluate the use of different metals in cells and batteries. And finally you should be able to describe the differences between rechargeable and non-rechargeable cells and batteries. And all of this material is for triple chemistry students only. Now we're used to the idea of using batteries to power appliances. I'm showing you several batteries here. In this video we're looking at the chemistry inside batteries, so let's get started. Here's the first key idea. If we take two different metals and place them into an electrolyte, then we can produce electricity. Now an electrolyte is simply a solution that can conduct electricity, for example a solution of an ionic compound. So I've got here a strip of copper and a strip of magnesium, and I've placed these two metals into an electrolyte solution. If I connect the two metals with a voltmeter, then I will see a potential difference of a voltage between them, and an electric current will flow through the wire like this. So what's happening here is that a chemical reaction is taking place on the surface of the two metals, and these reactions are producing electricity. Scientists call this setup a cell, and we can use cells to generate electricity. Now I should point out that this is a very simplified version of an electrical cell. In practice, a cell such as this one would not generate an electrical current for very long. Cells that we use in chemistry are slightly more complicated than this one, but the idea is the same. Now here are a couple of key points. Firstly, a cell can only produce electricity for a certain period of time. That's because the chemicals in the cell eventually run out. In other words, the reaction stops. Secondly, cells only produce electricity if we use metals with different reactivities. So we're going to look at that now. This shows you the reactivity series of the metals. At the top we've got the reactive metals, such as magnesium and aluminium. And at the bottom we've got the less reactive metals, such as lead and copper. Now I'm only showing you here a small selection of the metals. We can use the reactivity series to choose the metals for our electrical cell. Remember that the size of the potential difference depends on the difference in the reactivity between the two metals. So for example a cell containing magnesium and copper will have a large potential difference. However, a cell containing zinc and tin will have a smaller potential difference, as there's a smaller difference in reactivity between the two metals. So the key fact is that the greater the difference between the reactivity of the metals, the greater the potential difference produced by the cell. You should also be aware that the electrolyte also affects the potential difference, but you don't need to know any more details than that. So we've looked at the idea of a cell, but what's meant by a battery? Well a battery simply contains two or more cells connected in series, and that produces a greater voltage. Here I'm showing you a single cell with a potential difference of around 2.5 volts. However, here I've connected two of these cells in series, and this produces a potential difference of 5 volts. You'll find out more about series circuits in my physics videos. We're going to finish by looking at rechargeable cells and batteries. Alkaline batteries, such as this one, are non-rechargeable. At some point the reactants in the batteries run out and no more electricity is produced. Now there's no way that we can reverse these reactions, so these are non-rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable batteries, such as these ones, can be recharged, and that's because we can reverse the chemical reactions when we apply an electrical current. Remember you'll find plenty more questions on cells and batteries in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. Ok, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by a cell and a battery. You should then be able to evaluate the use of different metals in cells and batteries. And finally you should be able to describe the differences between rechargeable and non-rechargeable cells and batteries.